Yes. Pension Board of Trustees special meeting, Thursday, April 18th, 2013, at 1802. Trustee, Director Wisniewski, will you lead us in the pledge of I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Roll call of all board members and president. <coughs> Additions del or deletions to the agenda. We do have to add one item to the agenda. Uh, at the end, after all, any other business to be brought before the board, uh, we'll go and need to go into an executive session. Any other additions or deletions to the agenda? Good. Not Okay. Seeing none, I'd entertain a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, to review the January 10th uh, meeting minutes. First item will be the pension trustee vacancy. Uh, Chief, you want to walk us through that? Uh, sure. Um, you know, in the past, uh, the district had, had conducted the um, elections for that in a very informal <coughs> manner from the uh, members who came to you know monthly membership meeting. Uh, however, in order to uh, you know comply with uh, state rules on that on that, we do need to also include all. Uh, retirees. Um, we had a partial list of retirees uh, available before, but uh, we went ahead and contacted the FPPA to get the list of all of the retirees of the district uh, that uh, need to be notified about that election. Uh, so we have that now, uh, and um, what uh, I would recommend is that uh, we go ahead and, and send a notice to all of active and retired members of the vacancy requesting nominations, and then uh, conduct an election uh, of all of both uh, retired and active members. Uh, and what I suggest that we could do is set that as a deadline that uh, that be done prior to the next meeting so that we have that, uh, the results of that election and can appoint that uh, additional trustee at that time. That be a mail ballot? We're going to have to mail uh, for the retirees because uh, that's the information that we have on on the retirees is the mailing address for the FPPA. Uh, we, have, we have to mail to all the I mean, mail to everybody. We can uniformly all of the active members. We have uh, email for oh, all okay. of them, so we can conduct that by email for all active members. We'll have to go uh, snail mail for uh, the retirees. Okay, so you'll mail out nomination first, right. a deadline for that. Well, I'll notice that uh, there's a vacancy along with a request for nominations, and then we'll have to follow that up with, uh, you know, a ballot. Basically a ballot. Right. All right. Is everybody good with that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right, that'll take us to the 2012 norm. We just need a motion to... And basically, that motion is just to map the warrant. Everybody wants to look over the 2012 pay warrant for the pension fund. This is to reimburse the district for. I 
That's good. Yes. Okay, the motion to uh, commence with the warrant. So so moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, next item will be the fill fees pension request. We have the letter from the chief on uh, his pension years. You want to discuss that at all? Uh, certainly. Um, Phil Fees uh, did uh, begin as a volunteer uh, at the beginning of 2001. <clears throat> Over the past uh, 12 years, he had 10 good years and two years where he did not meet the uh, requirements, which means that uh, during that time he accumulated, you know, 10 years uh, in the pension plan. Uh, he, and he is now at the age that uh, he is eligible to receive that pension and has requested that pension. So um, my recommendation is that the board uh, award the uh, pension to fill fees effective uh, his request date of March of 2013. Do we need to specify an amount? Yes. Is that $200 a, a month or a 10 year? I would then move that we accept the uh, chief's recommendation with regard to uh, pension for fill fees uh, in the amount of two hundred dollars a month. Second. Second. Any seconded? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Okay. Um, any other business to be brought before the board? You have anything, chief? No. Marie, you have anything else? Just you got fourth quarter allocation attached to your package. Oh. Any questions on the allocation? Good. Okay. <coughs> um, any other business to be brought before the pension board? Okay, then the next item will be to, I move that the pension board adjourn into an executive session to discuss matters with the attorney representing the district for the purpose of receiving legal advice on a specific legal question on a Colorado revised statute 24-6-4024B. And the following additional details are provided for identical identification purposes. Discussion of settlement agreement in case number 03CB26. Three. Second. All, the, second. Yeah, all those in favor of convening into an executive session. Aye. Aye. <clears throat> uh, Mr. Chairman, as the uh, district's opinion, uh, excuse me, as the pension board's attorney, it is my opinion that the discussion of the matter announced in the motion to go into an executive session uh, constitutes an uh, privileged attorney-client communication, and therefore recommending that no further record be kept until the executive session has been concluded. Okay, uh, the pension board attorney has recommended that no further record be kept of this executive session. The time is now 1810 and we are turning off the tape recorder at this time. Now 1938, we've turned the tape recorder back on because the attorney-client communication is finished. The executive session has concluded participants in the executive session or the entire pension board that is present here tonight. For the record, if any and, person... And, and, the chief and, the and the chief and the attorney. Uh, for the record, if any person who participated in the executive session believes that any substantial discussion of any matters not included in the motion to go into executive session occurred during the executive session, or that any improper action occurred during the executive session in violation of the open meeting laws, I would ask that you state your concerns for the record. Seeing none, the next item on the agenda is a motion for agenda. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passed at 1940. Take a couple minute break and then we'll start with the regular uh, special board.
approved. Second. Second. All those favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> All those yeah, we're yeah. All right. Those we, the minutes are approved. Uh, next item will be financial matters. Uh, the first thing is I'd, uh, I'd like to move that we approve uh, $114,990 with the expenses for March of 2013. So moved. All those in favor? Aye. Passes. Uh, you have in front of you uh, uh, the financial statement for March, um, which you can review, uh, as well as the usual detail uh, underneath it. Uh, if you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer. The only thing that uh, I would say is that, and I don't know, Chief, you'll be covering this in your report, but we uh, are now, as I understand it, really working hard to put the new chart of accounts together so that the report you'll be getting uh, soon will correspond to the budget that we approved, uh, the format of the budget that we approved last fall. Um, I assume the audit is <coughs> proceeding apace. Um, I don't know, if Chief, is there anything you'd like to add? Financial? Now they are. Uh, the accountant has uh, started to work on, uh, on uh, you know, the changing that chart of accounts to, uh, com you know, basically comply with the recommended, uh, you know, accounting measures that the state has. Uh, and uh, so we'll see that. It'll also allow us to <coughs> correspond more to the budget that we approved. That's correct, and yes. Of course, in the budget we have the narrative, so we'll be able to take a look at uh, our financial status as uh, compared to that narrative and what our goals and objectives are. Um, I think that's it. Question on financial. All right, that'll take us to the chief's report. Okay, um, the chief's report there is in front of you. Just a recap: in March, we had uh, 78 calls, including uh, one structure fire that uh, caused a significant amount of uh, damage. Uh, the that uh, fire um, the, was investigated by uh, uh, Randy Redloff with uh, Inner Canyon. And he determined that uh, it was probably uh, it probably had been burning for uh, up to eight hours prior to the 911 call. Uh, so that when the crews did arrive at that structure, uh, you know they found uh, heavy smoke to the floor. Uh, you know fire showing. At, at that point, uh, it was very heavily involved, and uh, they were unable to make any any um, headway on uh, extinguishing that fire due to uh, you know how deep-seated it was, unfortunately. Uh, we did 34 uh, patient transports uh, during the month, uh, which was a relatively busy uh, month. We did uh, also, uh, with the new, um, you know, the firehouse software, we're actually able to pull out quite a bit more information, uh, including that, uh, you know, we had an average turnout per call of 11 uh, volunteers, or 11 firefighters, so that, uh, you know, that's pretty significant, uh, uh, the solid response from our personnel. Uh, and another thing that uh, we are able now to look at, and we saw that uh, we had nine different times where we had uh, multiple incidents uh, going on at one time. Um, I think that number is actually going to be quite a bit higher in April because I think we had that many in a single uh, shift uh, last week. So, uh, you know, that's, that is definitely an issue that we're going to have to address is how we can manage uh, second and even third calls uh, you know at the same time uh, in training um, March was uh, 1862 hours of training which uh, is a pretty substantial number uh, probably the highest uh, the district's ever recorded uh, largely because of the recruit Academy going on and then in addition during the month we had um, uh, the uh, refreshers for our wildland uh, uh, training, which uh, added quite a bit to the uh, um, to that uh, uh, time. Uh, coming up, we've got a <coughs> pediatric emergencies class that uh, are um, actually the uh, uh, medical program director is actually requiring that we get all of our personnel up to date on that. That was something that uh, uh, quite a few of our folks were not current on. Uh, certifications. Uh, 
We've also we've just completed uh, chainsaw operations class, and we've got uh, a lot of that class, class going on as well uh, in preparation <coughs> for the eventual wildland season, which may come this year. Um, staffing, we, uh, we had, uh, in addition to our paying staff, we had uh, 1,492 hours of volunteer staffing here at the station. Uh, so, uh, once again, a considerable number of our volunteers are uh, putting in a tremendous amount of time um, you know, uh, here at the station, either on calls or uh, being available for calls. So, that was, uh, uh, it's been actually a very, uh, very good improvement. Um, you know, it's very, uh, pretty much every day we've got uh, a couple of extra people here to help augment the staffing. That's made a, quite a bit of difference in our ability to handle those multiple calls as well as uh, you know more serious calls as well. Uh, we also, at this point, um, between uh, all of our uh, volunteers, uh, volunteer firefighters, EMS, and, and uh, support volunteers, we're up to 91 volunteers uh, altogether. And I think that we have about 15 <coughs> more applications sitting on our desk for our personnel that have uh, you know previous experience or training with other departments that uh, want to volunteer with us. Uh, we probably are going to uh, have to uh, basically <coughs> stop accepting applications even uh, fairly soon at the rate that things are going. But we get phone calls almost every day for you know, more people who want to come uh, volunteer with us, which is a really good approach. Yeah. Yeah. Is that just because you can't afford to volunteer? And only have so many days. Yeah, and it cost us uh, it cost us quite a bit you know, every every volunteer on. And, uh, we're um, you know we have to purchase enough equipment to put a volunteer firefighter on you know, is somewhere in the range of <coughs> six to ten thousand dollars now for uh, equipment. Uh, it's a lot of equipment we may have already, but uh, well, every time <coughs> it's up to a cost of the it's about two thousand dollars for for a firefighting jacket now. Really? Just for the jacket. Just for the jacket. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's six to ten thousand dollars per volunteer. Yes. That's a great turnout. Wildland. Turn out wow. land and um, yeah. We've been we've been you know trying for every grant that uh, we can find out there, um, yeah, but so is everybody else. And I was going to get to that. Uh, we still have not heard on the grant for the fire engine that's uh, pending. Uh, and uh, we have uh, one additional newer grant that, uh, that we put in that has been forwarded to the state, and that would be to uh, replace the laptops on the ambulance uh, because our cars are fairly old. And that's, of course, how we uh, do our, our patient reporting to the hospital uh, and, uh, and to the state is, is with those units. So um, we're kind of limping along with really old laptops right now. And hopefully, we'll. Uh, See that awarded by the state to purchase new ones. I have not uh, seen an, uh, a gear grant uh, opportunity come up lately, but uh, when we do see one, uh, we'll, we'll take advantage of it. Uh, one of the other things uh, that uh, you know, we've been working on, uh, which goes in, in, uh, hand in hand with the um, level of service committee, is uh, looking at our deployment modeling and, uh, and at our ISO rating. Um, you know, currently we have, uh, again, as, as I've reported before, a substantial part of the district has uh, uh, a class 5 rating currently, and then uh, quite a bit of the district has a class 10. Uh, we are working on um, you know, the, the automatic aid agreement, which if, uh, if that uh, pulls together and we get uh, basically revise how dispatching is done throughout the mountain communities of Jefferson County, then uh, you know, we should be able to um, cover about 80% of that class 10 area with, with a class 5. And you can see those, uh, those two maps that are available there. The first one shows the, um, the uh, class 5 and class 10 areas, and then the second uh, map, uh, they may actually be backwards in here. So, uh, the the uh, other map shows uh, basically a modeling of uh, response areas uh, from our stations and from our neighboring departments to see what areas uh, they would be able to cover. So it looks like we're moving ahead uh, toward you know, the ability to save uh, our residents quite a bit of money 
uh, and fire insurance rating. And again, those, those folks that live in those class uh, 10 areas are paying anywhere from two to three times uh, the amount that uh, the class five areas are paying. Uh, with that, um, we are still you know, going to have to be able to maintain all of the uh, standards that are required to keep that class five, which includes uh, you know, being able to deploy a certain amount of water uh, with the tenders, as well as uh, you know, all of the other uh, <coughs> factors that go into that. The ISO, for the first time since the 1980s, is uh, revising their standards. Uh, and uh, I have uh, gone through the, the proposed revision with the uh, ISO. And uh, I think that um, there are a number of areas where we could you know, potentially meet or, uh, or improve our current ISO rating. Uh, but uh, all of those, obviously, are going to be you know, contingent on our ability to maintain our current fleet, maintain our current staffing, uh, and provide you know, uh, training uh, for our personnel. Um, training is one area that we're looking at past, um, you know, past ratings of the district. Uh, the district did not uh, rate very well in training, uh, and I think that's an area that we can uh, certainly do quite well uh, at improving. Uh, the, where we have a uh, significant risk moving ahead in this uh, you know, is the, uh, the age of our tenders and the old uh, engine up at, uh, at uh, Station 3. Uh, <coughs> two tenders and one engine that do not meet uh, pump testing, you know, they fail pump tests, uh, and both of them, or all three of them, uh, were you know, built back in the 1980s and uh, you know, are uh, decidedly getting to toward the end of their service life. Um, we, we need to be able to maintain um, you know, at least uh, the amount of uh, water capacity in our tenders that we currently have uh, to keep that class five rating even, because if we lose the tender credit, uh, then not, we don't, not only do we not keep uh, or be able to uh, improve those class 10 areas, but we would actually drop everything uh, back to a class eight, with the exception of the few areas that have hybrid coverage. And so, Kings Valley would remain a five. Uh, you know, the Safeway and those places would remain a five, but the vast majority of the district would uh, would revert to an eight. Uh, so, you know, as we move ahead, we are going to have to look at how we are going to be able to replace and maintain those tenders, uh, and to be able to continue to move large quantities of water, which is the requirement for extending that class five uh, rating past uh, hydrogen areas. Uh, let's see, so other information, um, again, um, grants uh, we talked about briefly. Uh, deputy chief vacancy is uh, we're doing the assessment center uh, tomorrow uh, for that position, and uh, hopefully uh, it should be able to, um, uh, you know, then conduct background checks and, and make a job offer within uh, the next 14 days is our target. Um, the fire marshal program with uh, Evergreen is working uh, fairly well. Uh, they, uh, it's actually costing us less so far than uh, than we had budgeted, uh, and um, in part because there hasn't been much in the way of construction going on, uh, so that's been able to keep the total amount of time uh, relatively uh, relatively low. Uh, we're really sorting through all of the uh, occupancy inspections. Uh, that's another area in which, uh, in order to potentially improve our ISO rating in the future, uh, we need to uh, focus quite a bit more on not just the inspections, which is a relatively small uh, portion of the ISO rating, but more particularly, uh, there's a requirement that uh, our firefighters, <coughs> at least some of our firefighters, go to each of those uh, occupancies uh, to you know, basically pre-plan and be prepared for emergencies at them annually. And that, that is actually a fairly substantial chunk of the, uh, of the ISO rating. So uh, what we hope to do is move into a, a, a process where we pre-plan those structures, uh, get the pre-plans that are existing with the department up to date, and have uh, company visits to those uh, 
uh, occupancy so that uh, you know, we're, we're there and um, know what to do in the event of an emergency. This is just commercial structure. Just commercial, yeah. Um, the newsletter obviously went out, and uh, that actually uh, really worked out of even better than we had anticipated. Uh, we've gotten uh, dozens of phone calls from residents thanking us for putting that out. <coughs> Uh, many other calls asking for follow-up information on uh, many of the topics in there, uh, the Code Red uh, program, uh, uh, Smart 911, and uh, you know we had um, scheduled the CPR classes to begin uh, on a monthly basis, and uh, we are getting uh, swamped mm -hmm. with people wanting to take CPR classes, uh, and we're booking out a couple months in advance now. Uh, uh, we may even have to add additional classes to meet the demand from the public for those. So, uh, so that has worked out extremely well. Uh, in addition, uh, even though you know, we, we did not put a lot of focus on donations in that, we just mentioned in there that, uh, the, that the district and the association both would uh, accept donations, and um, we're somewhere around uh, over $6,000 in donations since that newsletter now. Uh, the majority of it went to the association, which obviously has the uh, uh, tax exempt status, so uh, the association's got uh, quite a bit more money to help uh, help fund uh, you know the operations of the of the department uh, moving ahead. Uh, we're still working on the on the mutual aid program again, and, uh, as I mentioned there. Um, this past month has been uh, a tough time. It seems like every time uh, we schedule a meeting, it's been snowed out. Uh, so. Uh, hopefully within the next uh, month or so, we should get the uh, study back from the uh, 911 board uh, looking at whether they want to consolidate uh, dispatch or move it to Evergreen or what they're going to be doing with that. And then the other project that has been taking quite a bit of time is the, the map books for the apparatus. And uh, uh, Firefighter Sander actually began printing those map books to put onto the apparatus uh, just this morning. So we're going to have uh, you know, much improved uh, map books. Um, for the first time, these map books are not only going to have all the roads in the district, uh, uh, but they will also uh, have all of the addresses listed so that we can quickly locate uh, structures. Um, if you recall, we've had a couple of situations where uh, we've had multiple, that we have multiple roads with the same name, but different address ranges on them. Uh, this will allow the firefighters very quickly to look at that and determine which of those uh, roads uh, they need to be going to and where the house is located on it. Uh, so that's going to be a huge improvement from where we were uh, a year ago. And uh, that's all I have uh, for the Chief's report this morning. Thank you. Any questions for Chief? I like the news live. Yeah, that was great. <coughs> great about that. Okay, uh, next item will be the level of service committee report. <coughs> if you'd like, yeah. Um, we've had two meetings with the committee. Uh, and uh, we've talked about how to both measure the level of service that we have now, what we need to improve, and how we're going to communicate that to our constituents. Um, level of service can be very complicated. Uh, we're trying to come up with, I think, the, the uh, ISO uh, information that you have in the Chief's report uh, is very important to us because we have to, again, say to our residents, uh, this is what we're capable of now. Uh, in the future, uh, in order to stay, keep that capability, we need so many resources. We're going to improve that capability. We need other resources. But the first thing to do is to define the level of service. And uh, I think we've made some good progress in that regard. Uh, we still, I think, the new being able to know what our run times are and our response times uh, may help out. Um, so we're going to pursue, first of all, defining what our level of service is, what we need in the future, what may happen if we don't have additional resources. And then we're going to try and come up with some recommendations to the board uh, as to how to proceed. Um, I think we're also trying to get input from other people. We have a pretty good committee. 
um, with uh, two directors, uh, the chief, uh, Captain Ware, uh, and two members of the uh, community. Uh, oh, and Mike, <laughs> Dr. Mike Davis. Uh, so we're meeting every couple of weeks, and uh, I think it's working out pretty well. If anybody wants to add anything, Director Ryan. Uh, you basically hit on the notes that I had. I'm so sorry. No, no, no. no it's I, I actually read them upside down it's, while you were writing. <laughs> no, no problem. That's basically what I was going to add, so we're good. Yeah, okay. Do you have anything to say? Anybody else? Okay. Thanks. All right. Any old business for the board? Seeing none. How about new business? <coughs> Seeing none. Any citizens' issues tonight? Um, I apologize if this is redundant because I wasn't able to be at the last meeting. But two meetings ago, the chief talked a little bit about the various water supplies in the district and the ability to maintain them and how the ownership became part of the department and the possibility of the department not being able to maintain them or not having the resources or um, the abilities, I guess, just to maintain those water supplies. And I was wondering where that conversation went after his report in, uh, I guess that would have been February. We have not uh, made any uh, decisions on that. Um, you know, obviously that is very important for maintaining that ISO rating. Uh, however, those duties were uh, assigned to the fire marshal in the past, and now with uh, without that position any longer, it's uh, one more of the things that we have to figure out how we're going to be able to do with, with fewer personnel. Well, I know, too, that in the past, those water supplies have been used as training opportunities, uh, not only to familiarize people with equipment, but also to make sure that um, the depths of the volunteers knew where those water sources were so that decisions can be made quickly. And I'm just very concerned that that would even be a discussion because if the fire department stops maintaining the sources or delegates that differently, we may show up to a water supply we think is available that is not. Um, and we're also talking about a lot of neighborhoods where in order for them to determine how they can maintain those water supplies, they have to figure out how to come up with equipment, how to come up with staffing, and I, I think that's a critical part of what this, um, what this board and, and department are charged with is to make sure that we have um, knowledge of where the water sources are and that um, our people are trained to get out there and, and use them appropriately when they're needed. So I just, I am I implore the board and, and the chief to make sure that um, if there are going to be decisions made to reduce the maintenance of those water supplies that HOAs be notified neighborhoods that um, we allow for significant community input as we evaluate that decision because it's I think uh, a big concern to anybody who's not in an area that's supported by hydrants. Maybe when we get the deputy chief on, I'll bring you up a little more. I, I, I think uh, that that's a, an excellent uh, point, and I, and I agree entirely with, with that assessment. I think it is another one of those critical pieces that we need to, to be able to do. Uh, we did actually, uh, through the mapping project, just get all of those. Uh, water sources mapped for the first time. Uh, we had only only a portion of them mapped in the past, so now we have, at least have... I was going to ask you, it seems like the new maps have a lot of them on there, there so that's, that's mm -hmm. fresh information. Yes, now they're all on the maps. Thank you, Kim. Okay. That's awesome that you... What would be a reasonable um, for the board to ask for a uh, <coughs> report, you say, by the June meeting? I can I can certainly uh, let you know what our, what our uh, plan is and how we'll be able to Good, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's a great point. Okay. Anything else from citizens' issues? Okay, seeing none, uh, motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Right. We adjourn at 12.30.